We are now joined via Zoom by Advocate Dumisa Anzebeza to speak to us about Mr. Frank Dutton. Advocate, thank you so much for your time this afternoon. Now, Mr. Frank Dutton's death has been described as a big blow uh, for the Zondo Commission. Um, it would seem for the country too. What kind of person was he and, and how should he be remembered? Well, <clears throat> he's one of those very few people about whom you can say this was a humble man. Mm. Uh, not only humble, but a person who was good at what he did, and uh, on whose evidence as a result of his investigations could be relied upon. Uh, I remember um, that I met him only 20, 25 years ago, and that was at the time that he was assisting uh, Advocate Howard Vani and his uh, outfit in the investigation of who was behind the so-called Kwamakuta murders in uh, KZN, um, you, you know, um, which had taken place where the suspicion was that the South African Defense Force, as then was called, and top brass of that, in, of those in, of that institution were involved in that murder. Uh, after I had been appointed as the uh, head of the investigative unit, we had an occasion to go and visit him in KZN, and that is where I got to meet him for the first time. And that's where I began to understand and appreciate how a person with such a depth of knowledge and such a depth of, you know, um, of, of, of observation, a good listener, uh, was, uh, was also as humble as he was. Then the next, for me, the next major event for me where I actually met and worked with him personally was after he had been involved in the International Crimes Tribunal to Yugoslavia. And I got appointed to, um, to be one of the commissioners uh, of inquiry into Darfur. Uh, the upset, the, you know, to investigate the violations of international human rights law, international humanitarian law in Darfur. And I didn't hesitate when I was asked by Kasese, who was chairman of that inquiry, as to what I thought about Frank Dutton because he had come to know that Frank Dutton, um, you know, was going to be appointed to lead the investigative unit into Darfur. Um, and we met. I remember that uh, we met in, first of all, in Khartoum, which is the um, capital of Sudan. And uh, before we, we went into the field, uh, I had a, a, you know, a briefing, a full briefing from Frank Tati. Again, I was just amazed by the, by the depth of his knowledge that he had already gone into the field, had established what lay behind those uh, murders, you know, the ginger weed and what have you. And uh, again, when we went into the field in, uh, in West Darfur, I met Frank and Frank had, you know, already established one of the cases that became, you know, um, uh, an indication. Uh, it became one of the one of the cases that was key in establishing the link between the Sudanese army and the Janjaweed, you know, um, as well as you know the other perpetrators, including you know, the Sudanese then president um, who, who now is serving time. Um, uh, so, uh, and, and just recently, to come home, uh, about two, three weeks ago, I, I, I had a conversation with him and I was saying to him, we, a number of us, including uh, the late Archbishop Desmond Tutu, had made 
uh, had signed a petition uh, to the president to appoint an inquiry into why certain, you know, um, you uh, investigations uh, that were complete were not prosecuted, and therefore there should be an inquiry into why the National Prosecuting Authority didn't do their work. And I recall that because I was aware that Frank Dutton was assisting the Foundation for Human Rights in uh, in establishing, uh, you know, those people who had not been prosecuted, who should have been prosecuted, and so that we could boost our, our campaign. Um, and Frank Dutton was available and we talked. And I indicated to him that there were aspects also of another murder that had taken place in the Eastern Cape in 1985 of Batan Wandondo, in which I believed that one of the security policemen had not been prosecuted when he ought to have been prosecuted. And I, in, I called upon him to continue to assist the police who had come to visit me in my chambers here to say, what is it that was not properly done in relation to the murder of Batana and Londo? So, I mean, I have lost personally one of the best investigators, uh, but then the country and the world from just the little that I've been able to talk to you about uh, in this interview has also lost an, an, an investigator par excellence. But what struck me about Frank, and you will get that from everybody who knew him, was the way in which he was humble, the way you would never attribute the thoroughness with which he investigated anything that he put his mind on. You would never associate it. And you never associate that with the kind of person that he was. That's how I remember him. And it's a loss. And this is a man, of course, you know, who joined the SAPS at the age of only 17 years. And after training, he was then posted to all these various uh, positions, as you speak of. Let's talk about his recent role, Advocate. Now, uh, a lot uh, saying that his role in the Zondo Commission was because of his continuing role to see justice and truth uh, prevailing. I mean, that's not just the only thing that he did in recent years. I mean, uh, in 2017, and as, in, as an example, um, at the request of the, the Timmel family, he looked into the death of Ahmed Timmel in detention in 1971. And he's the one that actually concluded that the police covered up his murder. Talk to us just about, you know, um, his role and how this is obviously a big loss, you know, for the Zondo Commission uh, specifically in terms of the uh, sensitive work that he has uncovered and, of course, testifying at that inquiry. It, it speaks exactly to what I have been saying about uh, Frank. Mm. When Frank investigated anything, it was with, an, you know, an amazing thoroughness. You mentioned about uh, Ahmed Timor, you know, uh, you, now you will recall that in Timor's case, there had been these so-called inquests that had been held by the apartheid order, which had not revealed the truth of what had happened. These investigations, the involvement in that investigation, had led, you know, even the National Prosecuting Authority to now institute the kinds or to say to 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 want to conduct an, you know, an investigation into, 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 into what really happened. Um, and it was clear when it came before the judge that the judge was not able to uphold the no one is to blame kind of verdict of the previous, of the previous era. And that's why uh, the judge found that, uh, you know, Ahmed Timol had been murdered. He had been pushed to his death uh, unlike the version that was being put or that had been perpetuated over time. But there is another investigation in which I know uh, uh, Frank Dutton was involved in, and that was the murder or the disappearance of Nogutula Similane. You will know that there was this sorry story 
uh, about about this female who was kidnapped by the police, terribly tortured, and uh, and uh, and about whom about wh whose disappearance the there had been no indication as to what had happened. And you will know also that, you know, when, before he died, Rodriguez was one of the people who was associated with the murder of Ahmed Timor, you know, had been charged. So um, he was involved, therefore, in, in making sure that there was enough evidence. You should see, for instance, what he unearthed in investigating the murder of Noctule Similani. It's amazing that here is somebody who, when the Foundation for Human Rights asked him to do that kind of investigation, was able to put together such convincing body of evidence that we asked ourselves, why was this evidence which was there for anyone to pick up and continue the investigation into what clearly was the murder of Nutulus Milan. Why was there no one in the in the in the state agencies for investigation and in the National Prosecuting Authority? You know, why was this not pursued to the very end? So those attempts by a number of us, you know, who wanted the truth to be unearthed, and for those who had not applied for amnesty in relation to events and deeds that they did in relation to which they should have applied to, for amnesty and didn't apply for amnesty, or they applied for amnesty and they didn't get amnesty because they didn't make a full disclosure. We were now going to be able to say the, the, the president must make sure that those who should be prosecuted are prosecuted. And Frank Dutton was very much central to that body of people who had made sure that the unfinished business of prosecutions is not left unfinished. Indeed, a uh, life well lived. Thank you so much for taking us through, you know, some of the recollections that you that you knew of of him, uh, Advocate. Thank you so much for your time, Advocate. Before we we wrap this interview and and not to conflate matters, uh, uh, it would be amiss of me not to ask you just for your reaction on this breaking news story that we currently have um, that we're currently broadcasting here on on the show, and that is of the Proteas head coach Mark Boucher being charged with gross misconduct by Cricket South Africa. Uh, now, for his role in the racial discrimination experienced by uh, former national spinner Paul Adams, for one, just your comment on this. Well, uh, my comment is not going to be further than the one that I made in my findings. I, I, <laughs> I submitted to the authorities a report that is over 200 pages, mm -hmm. and I made my findings. I have to say that even though I had made findings on a tentative basis, I think the correct thing that now is happening is that, uh, you know, the matter is now, um, Mark Boucher is given an opportunity to go and appear before uh, Advocate Terry Mutau, Mutau I believe, mm -hmm. um, and, 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 uh, and I'm sure it will be an inquiry where you will have um, the best opportunity to say something on his own behalf, um, and there will be fairness. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm quite happy that uh, Create South Africa has acted very swiftly by making sure that my own findings, which I indicated were impacted upon by the strictures of time under which I operated, are now going to be put to the test. And I would love to intervene um, in what other advocate Tao or Mutau has to do, uh, given the enormous task that he now faces. Uh, because there is my report, it is tentative in some respects, but uh, then I've made a definitive finding in respect of Mr. Mark Boucher. It is indeed, Ms. Um, Advocate uh, Terry Mutau, um, 
uh, as it says on the statement by the CSA that uh, he would meet the advocate on the 26th of January to determine a timetable for the proceedings. Advocate Nzebeza, thank you so much for indulging us this afternoon and thank you so much for your time. You're welcome.